Сегодня, надеюсь, у нас получится пообщаться с Камилой. Давайте подождем ее. Сейчас она присоединится. У нас первый эфир был технически, да, настраивались мы. Пишите ваши вопросы Камиле. Я обязательно постараюсь задать и перевести для нее. Эфир у нас будет происходить на двух языках, на русском и на английском. Конечно же, синхронный перевод, как вы понимаете, давать сложно, но основные мысли э, я постараюсь перенести. Да, yes, Camila, I see you, so I'm trying to add you now. Let me find you in... Yes. Now it works. Yes, finally. finally. Sorry, I messed it up. Finally. Yes, we did it, Camila. Um, a bit um, technical issues because we are um, quite um, people, I think, yes, <laughs> we are used to meet <laughs> with you uh, during uh, almost in Paris, I think, right? Yeah, and absolutely, can, every year in Paris, year, yeah. Yes, do you hear me well now? Because I use AirPod, so you as well. I hear you yeah, very I well. Too. Great. Finally, we did okay. it. I see many visitors here. I just made a brief announcement about uh, our topic. Uh, I got so many, many questions for you. Uh, I will. We will try to focus on the most interesting and most most, um, I, I don't know, uh, concerning one, I think, because uh, uh, okay. everyone now at home. So you are uh, mm -hmm. now in Switzerland, right? At, at uh, your yes, home am. with yeah. family. Everything is okay. Yeah. How do you feel there? How's family, Michael, your kids? Um, you know, it's actually been quite wonderful because my um, older sons, they both live uh, in London. So they've been home with us for three weeks and we haven't um, had a time like that together um, undisturbed in many, many years. And our daughter who lives at home as well. Um, and we're lucky we live out in the countryside. So um, we're a bit on our own anyway. And um, I, I just really feel for people who are stuck in big cities or in small apartments. And I've just been really lucky that I haven't had to, to deal with those things. So um, it's made me really appreciate where I live and how I live. And uh, it's also made me want to start changing things in my house though. I've been moving furniture. I've been <laughs> Never <laughs> moving <stop> pictures. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to change things. <laughs> okay, Camila, I will try uh, because we have audience uh, of Russian yeah. speaker, uh, speaking uh, visitors here. Mm -hmm. So I will take a brief uh, translation uh, okay. after our some blocks of talks. Okay. No Итак, мы наконец-то подключились. Прекрасная Камила с нами в эфире. Поздоровались, узнали, что все в порядке. Семья, дети. Многие вы знаете, что Камила, она не только успешная бизнес-леди, но еще мама троих детей, возлюбленная жена. И я поинтересовалась, как дела с семьей. Камила рассказала, что они сейчас находятся с семьей в доме в Швейцарии, в Сангалине, где как раз была основана компания, да, и, по-моему, они в том самом доме, в котором уже много, много поколений живет семья в Пешбахе, сейчас я узнаю у Камилы, и Камила рассказала о том, что, да, один, старший сын в Лондоне у нее сейчас, но она очень рада тому, что у нее есть прекрасная возможность жить в загородном доме. Да, господа, перевод Борис, so I'm saying hello, people are asking about translation, so I'm just saying hello to everyone, saying greetings, I see Maria, she also saying big greetings to you and Natalie, all of our team, so, and people, people are saying hello. So, um, Camila, I know you as, uh, everyone know you well as uh, very successful art director of popular company, 200 years company. And um, you've been called many times uh, the most uh, 
inspiring lady in textile business. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, pioneer of innov innovations. And, um, and the person uh, that were, was able to change a look of quite a traditional and conservative company of 200 years old almost for that time when you came and uh, gave it a look of absolutely a trendsetter. So, um, and uh, once also pay attention that some of the editors called you material girl. <laughs> It's you know, I've never fun. heard that before, so uh, <laughs> I, I hope it's a compliment. I, <laughs> I, I like the materials. <laughs> yes, but it was, of course, for the new collection uh, yeah. in this, that reference, of course, it was ironic. So uh, for me, uh, it's quite difficult was to find more information about uh, you like a personality, because most about for business, for textile, uh, for company. And uh, for us, it's, it's uh, interesting how you uh, do you feel yourself, how you would represent yourself as personality. You know, um, it's always a critical to talk about, about yourself. Um, it's, uh, I think, just the fact that I am both half American and half Iranian, and I live in another place. I live in Switzerland, where my children have, are being raised now. Um, I have always had my hands in, in different pots. So I am, uh, it's part of my strength, I would say as well, which is I'm always looking at things from different angles. And I think um, that's quite uh, an important thing. I never take things as face value. And if someone tells me I can't do something, I seem, for me, that means I haven't asked the question right. Because I know I'm going to get a yes. I just have to keep asking until I get a yes. Um, that's maybe just uh, my personal uh, determination or maybe uh, the way I grew up as the youngest child. Um, I have three older brothers. And uh, so there were often lots of you know, people in my life trying to tell me no. And um, I just don't take no for an answer. I just keep going. And I think that's sort of how started things with Be New when people said, Nobody wants uh, fabric made out of plastic that's thrown away. No one wants your garbage uh, fabrics. Um, <laughs> I just thought, well, you just don't know that yet because I was early. I started this more than 10 years ago with the recycled fabric, but it just, it made sense to me. And I think it's really important as a, as a person to, to believe in what, you, what your vision is. Of course, figure it out. But once you do, don't let other people tell you no. Uh, yes, I was just uh, before our uh, talks now, I was uh, here, uh, also switch on your podcast about uh, your last one. Also, many uh, questions yeah. were there. Yeah. So I will try to explain people uh, outside the screen what we are talking now. Uh, Итак, uh, господа, у нас в гостях великолепная Камила Фишбахер. Uh, многие знают Камилу как арт-директора компании Кристиан Фишбахер, но мы очень мало знаем о Камиле как о личности. Uh, я пригласила Камилу для того, чтобы познакомиться с ней поближе, потому что личность действительно очень интересная. Ее называют uh, самой интригующей и самой вдох... одной из самых вдохновляющих женщин в интерьерном, uh, в текстильном бизнесе. Она, ее называют пионером инноваций, поскольку Камила очень много любит работать с инновационными технологиями и привносить что-то новое. Наверняка вы все давно слышали о, нов... о линейке компании Кристиан Фишбахер Беню. Это ткани, которые были произведены из сырья, переработанного на основе из ресайкл, да, из пере сырья из пластиковых бутылок. И Камила не только да, эта коллекция, и не только эта тема, а вообще Камила очень увлекается всякими инновационными темами, 
И э, не зря э, ей досталась роль да, э, не только такого исследователя да, э, и первопроходца технологии, но и человека, и личности, которая смогла изменить э, лицо компании э, 200-летней э, да, истории практически, э, когда Кристиан Фишбахер воспринималась как компания очень традиционная. И после того, как Камила пришла в компанию, она смогла поменять лицо компании. И сейчас это трансетер, это компания, которая воспринимается как очень современная инновационная компания. И мы... Следующий. Как она себя представ... может представить как личность, да, потому что мы очень много знаем официальной позиции, да, но очень интересно узнать... Как же она себя видит, как она себя ощущает. И э, Камила рассказала о, немножко да, о себе, о том, что она э, очень э, ну, человек э, такой космополитичный. Да? Э, Во-первых, она родилась в семье э, смешанной. Да? Папа из Ирана, мама из Америки. Э, у нее было три брата, и есть да, большая семья достаточно. И э, Камила много путешествовала, да, в детстве переезжали в Швейцарию, сейчас она живет в Швейцарии, и сейчас семья тоже мультинациональная. И для нее, для Камилы, да, как для личности ключевым является всегда... Э, вот она, да, рассказала о том, что она очень любит вопрос э, «невозможно», да, ответ «невозможно», да. Э, она очень любит говорить э, так. Вы неправильно задали вопрос, поставьте вопрос корректно, да, и вот для нее вот эта бинью позиция, да, сделать что-то новое, да, поставить вопрос корректно, такой некий челлендж в жизни, такой некий вызов, да, который характеризует ее как личность, не только как управленца, да, и арт-директора компании, или как художника, да, но и как личность, кто такая Камила Фишбахер, и зачем, и что она делает в этой жизни, и для чего. Так вот, для нее бинью, да, она очень важна, да, быть инновационным, в принципе, по жизни. Yes, just a little bit. So, uh, of course, for uh, artist, uh, for a creative person, mm -hmm. uh, as you do as well, we know that you were studying um, uh, in uh, your school time, philosophy, and uh, from that time you were sta started to Uh, be fond of photography and I know it's a quite a big passion to you and uh, mm -hmm. you, you were saying that you are like a normal camera not a digital one <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> once I've just um, I remember uh, not this time but a year ago in Paris some of, of your clients uh, brought you as a gift some camera <laughs> and yes. I saw your yes. eyes yes exactly that eyes <laughs> it was <laughs> I saw your eyes <laughs> It was a passion for, for your life. And of course, um, uh, being a artist and be, being a manager of company in uh, textile, in uh, design industry, it's uh, always combining. So um, what about you? How do you feel? Are you more a, a manager or are you more artist? So where... I, I don't... So. Yeah, I don't feel I, I really have to choose between the two. Um, it's like this. I am lucky enough that in my day job, I lead a team of creative people. But each one of them is, is, is an expert in their field. You know, my stylist, that person has a job of styling things. The designer, the person who can paint, she draws better than me. The stylist is better at doing the other thing. I will hire a photographer to do, do a different thing. In order for me to manage them, I need to allow them to be creative on their own without me, you know, pushing my ideas. Otherwise, this team will only go as far as who I am, and that's not good enough. The team is always better as a group than as one individual. Um, so for me to lead a team of creative people, I, lead, I need to have them feel in charge of what they're working on. So that's the first thing. So as a business person, I lead... Um, let's say, a, a group of creative people. But if I didn't have my own creative outlet, my photography, what I really am passionate about, 
Um, I think then I would have difficulty um, leading the creative people and not getting too involved. I always say my photography is like the food that fills, fills me. It's the well that I take out of in order to then lead people creatively, but not try to enforce my, uh, let's say, uh, capabilities on that, but be more than that. And so the photography is for me something very, very personal. It's also a reason why I don't do it for the photo shoots, for the ad campaigns or anything like that is because um, I want our photography to be at a level where we can all agree it's good. But, you know, if your, do your job is uh, as the boss of this group of people, no one's going to tell you, oh, actually, that's a really bad picture. You know what I mean? Because uh, what are they going to say? <laughs> um, and uh, or that's a really bad design. Let's say I, I can't do everybody's job. The reason why I've hired these people is because they're an expert in their field. Um, so for me, there's it's two sides of, of the personality and one really helps the other. My creative side allows me then to, to look at things from a different point of view. And then as a photographer, I approach light very differently from other people. And um, I can immediately, let's say, edit a picture or see what's wrong with it. Or um, even when with my design team, I have the capability to look at a design and at, in an abstract on a flat paper. And then we can almost vision it. What will it look like uh, as a design? Because you have to follow that through. As you know yourself, when you're creating something or if even with the interior designers, they have to follow through that little piece of fabric. What will it look like on a chair? on a couch. That's the next step. So their creative process. So we, we create one side of things, then we give it to this expert, then we give it to you know the designers, then the interior designer, they're the next expert who then puts it onto the right chair or onto the right window. So I think it's, it's like a collaboration, a continuation. Uh, as far as I understand, for you, uh, you believe your strong pay, uh, side uh, as a manager is uh, you let to be creative all your stuff and you express yourself by, like this. So just put idea yeah. and not without not impact and not pushing them, but feeling like a team. Because I've heard a lot uh, from you about teamwork, about uh, getting people on a board and you are very strong. Mm, uh, focus on this too much and always saying about this and uh, just a note uh, for many times that you yes. <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> okay, let me translate uh, this <laughs> idea. Uh, да, такая дискуссия у нас uh, такая достаточно объемная, потому что вопрос мой был uh, Камиле следующего содержания. Uh, с одной стороны, мы знаем uh, Камилу как управленца, очень uh, uh, такую сильную бизнес-леди, да, успешную управляющую компанией и командой, и арт-директор, арт и успешно продвигающую продукцию и бизнес компании в целом. Uh, с другой стороны, Камила художник, да, и я вспомнила то время, uh, когда Камила, uh, действительно, она очень кре креативная личность, творческая и Камила она говорит о том что моя страсть это фотография да и я вспомнила ее школьные годы да она говорит что она увлеклась фотографией в школьные годы и даже сейчас иногда Камила делает фотографии но она не занимается этим для бизнеса да хотя у нее был такой опыт я слышала об этом и Конечно же, вот как соблюсти баланс, да, все-таки управленец или художник, кого больше в Камиле, да, как творческая личность, как она себя выражает и как она умеет найти этот баланс. И для, для Камилы секрет успеха, да, баланса успешной бизнес-леди и творческой личности, это все-таки работа в команде, да, и как объясняет Камила, для нее самое большое счастье – это работать в команде и позволять каждому члену команды, дизайнеру, фотографу, технологу проявлять себя и создавать процесс вместе. Камила очень любит выражение позволять людям выражать себя, и при этом она очень любит быть частью этой команды, и не любит выражение дав... оказывать давление на людей, на команду, да, а больше говорит о том, что нужно ее вести. И действительно, в интервью, когда Камила очень много говорит, 
работать в команде, нужно слушать, нужно быть частью команды. И а, вот тут, да, мы опять плавно перетекли к фотографии. А, Танила говорит, что фотография для нее осталась больше а, творческой составляющей, да, и это то, то, где она себя может выразить. А, и, конечно же, ее фокус и как и умение видеть код, ткань, дизайн, а, в ее финальном исполнении как фотограф ей очень сильно помогает, потому что действительно этот вижен да, сразу помогает быстро понять, насколько та или иная ткань будет готова, будет отлично It's quite a, a long time. I'm trying to 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 fix uh, main ideas. Uh, so, Camila, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, what was? Uh, of course, your your life story is uh, very interesting. You travel a lot, and you very uh, you're very cosmopolitan person and family and uh, very creative uh, person uh, and. What was uh, the um, the biggest uh, imp, um, situation or maybe a story in your life uh, uh, that put uh, the biggest imp impact on your career? Can you rem uh, remember this? When you came to textile business, what was the biggest uh, um, one situation, more remarkable one that uh, uh, just impact you? <laughs> well. I was trying to think of that. I'm trying to think what what could it be. I think um, living in in different countries, you know. Uh, so when my husband and I came first to Switzerland to join the company in Hong Kong, and um, so coming to Switzerland the first time in 1997, that of course impacted uh, my career. Uh, a lot because I then decided to join my husband's family's company. Um, so that, that was the first one. But also later when um, my husband and our three children, when we moved to Japan, then there was another impact where um, because I was, we were working in Japan, um, they would actually only give a working visa to one person in the household. So my husband could work And I was staying at home with our three little children, which, you know, was uh, a handful as it is. Um, that's actually, let's say, that's how my other career started as a photographer. Because since I was at home, I thought, well, I have to do something. I'm not going to just stay at home. Um, I need to do something on the side. So that would be another really big impact. And then the third one would be our return to Switzerland in 2008, um, because that's when I took over as art director. So um, there's these, these sort of big events that happened. Um, part of it, it was uh, serendipitous because of, the, of, of coming to a new country, but it's also the influence or the restrictions of one country that then helped me develop a new side of my career. I probably wouldn't have done the photography if I had continued to work in textiles. But because I couldn't, I went another direction. Which added actually because you like uh, correct questions, not yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, exactly. There's no no for you, just There's correct no, questions. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, uh, because um, let me translate. Вопрос был Камиле очень простой. Конечно же, имя Камилы Фишбахер связывает с компанией, да, Кристиан Фишбахер. И я спросила Камилу, какие же самые знаковые события, да, произошли в ее жизни, да, которые повлияли на ее карьеру в текстильном бизнесе, да, в целом. Ну, конечно же, что уж там скрывать, первый, да, это вообще начало ее работы в компании, да, в 97-м году она, безусловно, да, это такой первый шаг. А, второй момент, Камила, которая отметила, это путешествие с семьей, да, это жизнь в Японии, да, которая очень а, сильно повлияла на многие вещи в их жизни, в бизнесе в целом. А, достаточно длительное время Камила с, с семьей, с детьми жили в Японии, и... Такой момент, когда 
по законам Японии, это по, ви, по визовому режиму, а, только один член семьи мог работать. И на тот момент Камила да, была вынуждена оставаться с детьми дома, да, из-за такого визового режима, потому что Майкл, ее супруг, работал. И Камила занималась детьми. Но и тут э, был такой момент, когда э, дома было недостаточно для Камилы, и тут она очень много занималась фотографией. Да, и опять же, фотография по-прежнему очень сильно связана с работой в текстильном бизнесе и ее хобби, и вот это такая, да, которую Кабила вспоминает. Ну и, конечно же, третий такой существенный момент, о котором а, все знают, да, это в 2008 году, когда Камила стала, э, заняла должность арт-директора, и когда Майкл э, вступил в принял права уже, да, управляющего менеджера, и, ну, по сути, чита, да, стал управляющей парой, да, в компании. Это, конечно, тоже был знаковый момент. Oh, after 2008, uh, it was, um, uh, so, it was not a challenge for you, but uh, you uh, you were taking quite a serious all that happened, so, Because to take a company and to run the business, it's uh, quite a big responsibility. And I know that you always say about your um, father-in-law that uh, uh, always inspired you um, uh, as a personality. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, what was uh, the biggest challenge for you uh, when you started uh, as art director in Christian Fischbacher? Um, well, the biggest challenge was exactly what you described is, is how do I take a company that's 200 years old and has a very established look, but which has become a bit old? How do I make it relevant and interesting for my peers? Because um, how does it become a reflection of the direction my husband and I want to take it in? And, um, you know, you have people who have been working in the company longer than you, people who've been there longer and feel that they know Uh, perhaps more than what they uh, than what you do and you need to uh, go with respect and understanding and listening but also then trusting um, the direction that I wanted to take it in um, and I think the thing that actually changed everything was again coming back to be new because um, because of that fabric I realized that we couldn't portray our company Uh, with classical chairs and in a, in a classical environment because we were doing something brand new. We were um, taking plastic bottles and melting them down and making new fabrics. So it actually changed also our entire um, design look, our photography, because I first said, okay, I'm not going to change everything else. I'm just going to change this little baby, this little thing, be new. Once I changed this, yeah. 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 I think the venue is fun. Yeah. <laughs> And so this one, nobody had anything to say about. There was no preconceived idea of what it should look like because it didn't exist. So I only did that. As soon as I did it, I said, well, look, it doesn't fit anymore. So we have to change everything else. <laughs> so it was one thing at a time. But uh, in the end, it's, it's paid off because, uh, yeah, we actually established this look that everybody, a lot of other people started to, we took the fabric and we put it in a new uh, broken down industrial space. And we were really the first ones to do that. We threw like a dirty uh, broken place with the paint peeling, lots of patina. Um, we spent the first photo shoot just sweeping the floor. Trying to get you know, a fabric to be draped there to not look disgusting. Um, but again, what I wanted is I wanted a break. I didn't want to show a perfect interior because everyone always then has an, uh, an opinion about that interior. Oh, I don't like that chair. I don't like that lamp. Or we would get people asking us, oh, where did you buy that table? And we're like, we don't sell tables. We sell fabric. <laughs> so I wanted, to, I wanted to break it down to the most basic thing so that you knew the only thing that I could be wanting to show you is the fabric because everything else was you know, a destroyed industrial space. So it was sort of, that's the thing that broke and made everything else happen. So my challenge was um, convincing others, sorry, this keeps falling out. I move too much when I talk. <laughs> um, but also uh, bringing together a new team. 
because a couple of the women that I had first started with, uh, two had gotten pregnant, another one left. So I had to start with a brand new team. And that was a huge challenge as well. But also a great thing because they were then my team. But also, <laughs> yeah. maybe better. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me um, trans. And by the way, um, yes. was it difficult to, to convince uh, your team and uh, Michael and uh, Christian about your new project? I think it was a quite a big challenge because yes. Uh, yes, it was. European <laughs> people are quite uh, respect uh, their traditions and. Uh, I think that uh, it wasn't easy for you. <laughs> so you had many fights no, on no, the No, you're, <laughs> you're very, very correct in that. Not, not, with, not, with my, not with Mickey. He understood the vision right away. But there was definitely some discussions with the board of directors and, um, and some opinions that I did not agree with. But um, I, I was very determined. Um, and what okay, was... A very uh, wise Eastern lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think it really helped that, that um, Mickey understood the vision, but also it was the determination that even though this fabric that we were bringing wasn't making money, uh, the idea was new. And so we needed to just keep going. And now finally, 10 years later, now people are willing to listen. So it's also, it wasn't that I only did be new and listened to nothing and carried on, because that would be wrong too. You know what I mean? You can be determined to a point, but you still have to continue with the rest of the company of the things that they're known to traditionally do. I never ignored that. I always respected that and carried that on, but also continued with this new wave until it finally took on. It's like just adding a new, you know, you don't destroy the house you're building or adding an annex. And then maybe the annex will influence the rest. You don't know, you hope. But you, I don't want, never wanted to destroy the, the main thing. I'll let you translate. <laughs> И, конечно же, я задала вопрос Камиле о том, когда она заняла позицию арт-директора в 2008 году в компании, какой был для нее самый большой вызов, с чем ей пришлось столкнуться, да, и как она вообще справлялась, да, с этим, с этой ситуацией. И, конечно же, Камила, как наполовину, да, достаточно восточная женщина, да, очень мудро, да, рассказывала про то, как ей пришлось столкнуться с ситуацией, да, во-первых, конечно же, для нее большая ответственность, да, принять управление в такой компании, да, с вековыми традициями, и для Камилы это был, конечно, первый, да, первый серьезный вызов, это очень большая ответственность, да. И второе, что хотела Камила, да, сделать, и вы слышите, как она отзывается, да, о своих инновациях, о своих, о своей коллекции, да, инновационной авеню, да, это попытки, да, добавить вот эти инновации потихонечку в традиционную компанию, да. Конечно же, было много споров и советов директоров, но супруг ее поддерживал. Между прочим, Камила очень мило говорит о Майкле Миде, да, что ее поддерживал всегда, но при этом ей пришлось постепенно-постепенно добавлять да, свои идеи и бороться за них, и в итоге это позволило все-таки вот этому маленькому аннексу, как говорит Камила, да, маленькому предложению, на котором она работала над этими инновациями, да, над коллекцией Бенью, постепенно стать таким достаточно серьезным эшелоном, который повлиял в целом на имидж компании. Вот такая вот мудрая политика, да, такой вот мудрый управленец Камила. Uh, so, Camila, what about uh, what about um, now? Uh, uh, totally, uh, you are uh, for you. There is no no. <laughs> there is no no. <laughs> so, I was uh, going to ask you about the uh, how it's going on in quarantine. It's a very traditional question. Uh, yes. But I think that uh, the correct question will be is what you do first after quarantine. <laughs> Oh, I want to, I want to travel somewhere, but I think I'm going to have to wait. Um, actually the big, the thing I really want to do as soon as everything is 
is okay is I want to have a really big party and invite all my dearest people and we just need to get together and give each other a hug and dance and I don't know, just enjoy each other. And, and if not, do it by Zoom. But no, I, I really, really want miss uh, <laughs> my very close friends. It's, it's tough. It's very tough. Yeah. A big party. Yeah. <laughs> really, yes, really necessary. So do you make Zoom party now? <laughs> um, well, actually, my eldest brother, he's organized something fantastic. My family is... Um, all over the place in, in America. And um, I have my, my three brothers plus their wives and children and my parents. And once a week we have a Zoom party. And um, on Sunday evening, because my parents are stuck in an apartment in Chicago. And um, my brothers organize this so well because he has a theme each week and we share something together to also with all the grandchildren. So I'm even getting to know my own nieces and nephews in a very different way. And uh, last, last Sunday, we had to um, send in a picture of us uh, as a teenager. Um, so we got to see pictures of my father, my mother as a teenager, my brothers, and of course, the teenage kids got to enjoy seeing their parents and uncles. And then we each told a story about what that picture was. And uh, it was wonderful. It was, it's, it's actually brought me very close to family who are, I sometimes only see once a year. And some, some of them I see even less. So um, there's, there's been some good things, too. You know, one of the benefits to, to, to know better your friends and relatives because yeah. they were a ra rush, always we are rush. And business and uh, every time so just one time here then now every week <laughs> yeah yeah and and I it's it's given me the opportunity to set my priorities a little differently because often the people you love most is the ones that you think yeah hey, I'll call them later but actually I realize they're the ones I need to call more than xyz whoever that is the business people Uh, exactly. I definitely set my priorities. Yes. Uh, so, я спросила у Камилы, конечно же, про карантин, как ну, достаточно банальный вопрос, да, чем занимаются и так далее. Но я захотела спросить э, все-таки, чем, чем же Камила займется, что она сделает первое после того, когда карантин закончится. А, и Камила скажет, что первое, что она захотела бы сделать, это путешествовать. Но путешествие немножко придется отложить в связи с ситуацией. Но э, то, что можно сделать, это вечеринка. Она закатит огромную вечеринку, пригласит всех своих близких друзей и так, чтобы можно было всех, всех обнять, не, не, не так, как в зуме, да, сейчас. Очень интересно, да, поделилась Камила сейчас. Камила с семьей проводит время достаточно много в зуме и говорит, что карантин стал таким... Ну, плюсом карантина для нее стало общение с семьей, она стала больше узнавать а, своих племянников, своих, членов многочисленной семьи. А, ее родители в Чикаго, и а, они, много родственников по всему миру, и каждое воскресенье устраивают зум-вечеринки, общаются, а, показывают фотографии, узнают друг друга ближе, и это ну, тоже достаточно такое серьезное подспорье, для, и Камила говорит, что а, карантин дал возможность ей пересмотреть ее приоритеты в жизни и не бежать, все-таки уделять больше времени своим близким. What about, uh, Camilla, what about uh, uh, our new reality now? So, uh, are you working on uh, some new project? I'm sure you do. So, maybe you can share us about your uh, ideas and projects. Uh, because um, and for me is uh, more uh, wondering whether your plans now have been changed because uh, because of this situation definitely uh, this uh, everything affects uh, all our life so and reality so I'm sure that you have one plan for 2021 but probably you are changing something Can you tell us about your... 
collection a bit? Um, yes, uh, actually today was uh, the first day sort of properly back in, uh, in the office um, with big distances, of course. Um, but I sat together with my designer and um, we were planning out what are the next steps for 2021. And um, yeah, of course, you can't just do business as usual. On the other hand, you can't stand still. So um, I think what it's making us do is really, really focus. Um, we've decided to do less sort of um, big collections in general, but rather focus on very, very specific things. Um, because often we see after we've launched the collection, there's always one or two that we could have edited out. You know, we, we bring it and it didn't come out quite the way we expected but we get stubborn sometimes and still want to bring it. And I think this time we've really decided, listen, we are just going to concentrate on the good ones. And if they don't come out the way we want it, we're going to cut them a lot sooner. And um, so what it has made us do is really focus, you know, and um, I think that's going to influence what we're going to do in 2021. I mean, we've already started working on 2021 on the collection. And I already have the themes. I already, we already have the directions. I'm not changing that. But what we are uh, possibly changing,